Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Welcome. Come in, come in. Noel, hello, happy Sunday. Hey, Keisha. I got to look at your pictures. I saw the Instagram um, notifications come through, but I have not had a chance to look at them yet because I've been busy trying to dig out bags for tonight. Hi, Gina. Hi, Carmen. Look, Carmen, you inspired tonight's look. When I saw you in your dress and your animal print, I was like, yes, it is that season. I'm pulling mine out. Hi, Fancy. Let's see who else we have. Connie, the closet dive. Denise, 1971. I see Samariah Robertson. Welcome. Happy Sunday, ladies. Come on in. Get comfortable. Make sure you got some good beverages. Maybe a second device. You may or may not need it tonight. Hit the thumbs up. Get acquainted with the folks that are in the room. Hello, Vader. Happy Sunday. Hi, Emerald Gold. Hey, Roslyn. Uh, Miss Pretty Brown Woman. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday to you all. I got a stack of satchels. We got a reveal. I got some PSAs. I, like all kinds of stuff. So make sure that you're comfortable. Send those other people that pee standing up to go watch football. <laughs> so that you can concentrate on what we got going on in here tonight. Hello, Mrs. Q. Hi, Shirley. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you all are in the chat. Please go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you... um are watching in stealth mode and have not actively participated in the chat, my challenge is that uh, you will consider chiming in tonight, interacting with the folks in the group. I promise you it will be a positive experience. Um, if you have not subscribed, I'd ask that you do so and hit the bell alert. We're going to talk a little bit about that whole bell situation. Hi, Diva. Hi, DJ King. Hi, Sus. Um, hi, Mo. So listen, Mo giggles, Moco giggles. Let me get it right, Mo. Um, we actually attended undergrad together and she told me, of course, a couple of weeks after she had been in the live um, through one of our other classmates, she told me, she was like, Mo is in your lives. So wish to y'all say hey to Mo. Um, we go back double digit, double, double digit years <laughs> for undergrad. So I appreciate the support. Who else do we have in here tonight? DJ King, Diva 9000, Suz what? Nature Gal 925, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you decided to chime in tonight on the keyboard. Yvette Bryant, Ingrid Scott. Who else am I missing? Rosalind, I think I already got you and I already got Brina. All right, y'all, I got, look, look at here. I got some notes for y'all tonight. These are just the PSAs. I didn't even get to the notes. Hi, Candy Crusher. I did not even get to the notes on the bags because y'all know I can talk when it comes to bags. <laughs> so I didn't, I don't know that I need the notes um, for that. But here's what I do want to do. If you have not seen Candy Crusher's video, she launched it maybe 90, 120 minutes ago. Go check her video out as soon as this live stream is over, right? Just make yourself a note. Go check out Candy Crusher. If you have not seen Lisa J's world, I think I'm getting it right. Lisa, charge it to my head, not my heart. Uh, check out her last two videos. Those are channels that I have kind of been um, binge watching and catching up on content. Make sure that you go over and check those ladies out. Also, if you have not been over to check out Carmen Hawkins' channel, um, Carmen or Charmed uh, by Carmen, 
She has um, some fall bag videos as well as some Pandora stuff that um, I would say go check it out. And you'll also see where I got uh, tonight's wardrobe inspiration from that came from um, Carmen. But I'm in the enabler corner um, with Rosalind Ellis tonight because Rosalind and I have discussed this here purchase many a time. So Rosalind, go ahead, exit stage right <laughs> to the enable corner. There's going to be a few more people to join you in there tonight. Um, Cassie S. Welcome, Mrs. Q. Phenomenal personality. Candy Crusher, I think I have everyone in here now. Thank you, ma'am. Um, let's start with the PSAs. So the first is that yesterday's tribe time, hashtag tribe time. If you are, um, have not seen that, I'd ask that you go back. I think we had a really good time. I at least had fun with that one. Um, if you're curious about how to find all of the tribe times from all of the members um, in the tribe, if you do a YouTube search hashtag tribe time, it will pull all of our content up. So you can just kind of binge watch that this week. That is the easiest way to find all of the content um, that we have produced on the weekend. So, um, but yesterday I stated that the Red Smith was no longer available on ILD um, because I checked around 1 a.m. and it was gone from the site. But yesterday evening, it, well, let me rephrase it. Yesterday afternoon, after the live was over, after tribe time was over, the, they were back on the site and it was showing that 10 of them um, were then available on the site. If you recall, when I revealed mine, I had number two of 100. Um, Candy Crusher, I'm not sure what number your label had on it. DJ King, I don't know of yours. Reshmi, I don't know if you'll, you know, you ladies will tell me how many, but there appears to only have been a um, hundred. So if you're, okay, so D or six of 100, I got number two of 100. I, when those 100 are gone, that's it possibly for a little while. I, I, I'm just saying, you know. All right, so they were available. I do know that when Candy Crusher posted her video, um, she said that the number was fluctuating. I think it was around 12. So the, the quantity count is getting scarce. Candy Crusher got 19 of 100. So yeah, the numbers that those numbers are coming down and the Closet Dive just verified that there are currently 11 left. So I don't know how that number fluctuates. I don't know whether it's shipped or whether the bank has already confirmed for, for funds available, whether it is um, because the order has finals. I don't know what has caused that, but what I can tell you is if 100 is the count, we're down to basically the last 10%. The tide is what is remaining for those of you that are page of tides today because it's Sunday. We are down to the tide being left. So 10%. All right. Next PSA um, talking about uh, bringing kind of back up from last week. So last week or the week before, I'm losing track of time, um, there was a chat topic on missing loyalty points on ILD and Dooney. And um, some of you are already aware of this because there was a community post on uh, the community board on YouTube. And then I also did a separate Instagram post. And then for some of you, you got it directly from me via text message. But for those of you that may have missed it, let me share with you what we learned this week about missing points on Dooney and ILD for purchases. And that is that if you tender your transaction with PayPal on either of those two sites, PayPal does not um, award 
your loyalty points. I don't know why. Money is money in my opinion. We can discuss that in the chat. Let me know what your thoughts are. But if you choose to pay for your purchase on ILD or Dooney using PayPal as your payment method, um, and Keisha says also Apple Pay and Google Pay may also be in that one as well, you do not earn loyalty points for that purchase if you do not use a debit or credit card or I'm assuming a Dunian Burke gift card. All right. Ms. Uh, Closet Dive says that now there are only seven Red Smiths left. All right. Because y'all know when they're gone, they're gone. Um, who knows if they'll restock and if so, how long that will take. All right. So back. If you use PayPal to pay for your purchase on Dooney or ILD, PayPal to pay for your transaction, you do not earn loyalty points towards discount redemptions for the Dooney loyalty program. The other thing that I want to point out or remind you is that if you are on Dooney.com and you are planning to use reward points or your loyalty points you cannot redeem points and use dooney pay on the same transaction so you either redeem your points and get whatever your discount is and pay for that transaction in full or you can't use the discount and then you can split it up over the four months with the Dooney Pay option. So I'm a little curious what you ladies think about that. I don't remember when we were going over um, the terms and conditions. And y'all know I picked that thing apart. Remember us saying, hi, Katie. Because Katie had some decisions to make regarding the terms and conditions, the legal language um, in the program. But I don't remember there being anything specific that said that if you um, used one of those other methods of payment, could not earn points. I also don't remember there being, and I need to go back and look at them because terms and conditions continue to update. Um, but I don't remember there being a section that talked about an exclusion if you... Um, you know, if you use points that you could also not take advantage of Dooney Pay. But that is, in fact, the way that it works. I think they're figuring this whole um, loyalty program out as they go. There were a lot of things that, you know, made me uneasy about the program when it first rolled out. There were just things that didn't quite make sense. Um... I am not sure how long the program is going to last. And because of that, I don't save my points. When I get ready to make a transaction, if I've got $30 worth of points or 500 points eligible for redemption, I'm redeeming them. If it's $12.50 available at that time, I'm redeeming them. Because if and when they decide to pull the plug on this program, I won't be leaving rewards redemptions discounts on the table that's just my thing most of my redemptions have been thirty dollars um five hundred dollars a pop so y'all know i've really been picking some things to buy from um doing it but uh it may not always be that way but i have redeemed twelve dollars and fifty cents on an accessory that was on sale because i had points available my plan is to keep my account redemption as close to zero as possible. I'm earning and spending points at the same time. Now, I will tell you that with some of the 25% and 30% off discounts, plus being able to get another $30 off on top of that discount, I've kind of changed my opinion on the loyalty program because y'all know I gave it a, a D probably an F I have upgraded it to a B plus sometimes it's a it's a A minus it just depends on what the transaction is for me um but I also don't 
um, use PayPal or Google Pay or Apple Pay to pay for my transactions other than items I may be purchasing from eBay. Like um, I've purchased directly from ILD in the past through eBay and through Amazon because those prices were better than if I had gone directly to ILD to make the purchase, if that makes any sense. So when I'm, anytime I'm using, completing any kind of transaction on eBay, I'm using PayPal for an uh, basically for the dispute um, option, just in case something doesn't go right. Because any other time I can dispute a transaction um, with my credit card if something appears to be fraudulent. But for eBay, I use it because um, of the dispute option there. So, all right. So that I think was PSA number two. And number three, let's talk about YouTube notifications. I promise y'all there's a bag, there's several bags tonight, but you know, we got to get our housekeeping stuff done first. So let's talk about YouTube notifications. There are a lot of you that have shared um, that you have subscribed to a YouTube channel, particularly some YouTube creator in this community. You have turned on um, your bell alert for that channel, but you're not getting notifications of their live streams. You're not getting notifications when they upload a video. So let me give you some data first that was enlightening to me about my own channel, my own platform. And then I'm going to share with you why that is happening, why you're not getting the alerts. And then you can make a decision on uh, whether or not you want to take the measures to resolve it. And I'll tell you how to resolve that tonight. Um, but here is my disclaimer before I start kind of throwing numbers at you. And that is the solution that I'm going to give you is all or nothing. And you'll understand what I mean by that once I kind of start walking through it. All right. So here for, for this community here. There are of the 2,000, 3,203, I think, is my number, or it was before this live stream, um, of you, 23.2% uh, of you as a community have opted in to receive all notifications on my channel. So roughly 744 people in this community have subscribed and hit the subscribe, the bell alert and said, YouTube send me all notifications for the channel known as Juniatic 615, 23.2% of you or roughly 744. All right, the next group, 13.7% of you, so roughly 439 people in this community, you have both your notifications turned on. So you have hit subscribe, the bell alert, and you have turned, uh, it said all notifications, but you have also told your YouTube app that you want notifications sent to your phone from YouTube from the channels that you have subscribed to and asked for alerts on. All right, so the people in this group, so roughly 439 of you, you have taken four steps and are likely getting all of the notifications. You have subscribed, you have hit the bell alert, you have turned on all notifications and within the settings on your device, you have told YouTube to push notifications to your phone. If you are in that 13.7%, then you are likely getting the alerts for lives. You're likely also getting 
the um, notifications when I do a video on demand. The other 744 of you that have notifications, if you have that turned off on your device, I'm hoping that y'all are not in the chat right now because y'all are checking your settings. Otherwise, it's getting weird here. <laughs> But if you do not tell YouTube to push notifications to you, then you're not going to get it, even if you have the bell alert on and you say send all notifications. So, the, the, it's an all or nothing. So, by that I mean, if you turn on all notifications for my channel and you want those, and maybe you have all notifications... Um, for some channel that maybe your grandkid or your teenager or somebody else has done on your account, you're going to get all those notifications as well unless you go back in and say, turn off those notifications or restrict. I think it's all, some, or none um, of the notifications. Otherwise, for every single channel that you subscribe to, that you have ask YouTube to send you the alerts to, and that you have the push notifications on in the settings of your phone, then you'll get all of those. So it's all or nothing. I hope that makes sense. So if you do not have all four of those actions taken, subscribe, bell alert, all notifications, and you have in the settings said YouTube push notifications or yes to notifications or notifications on, then you are likely getting the YouTube algorithm um, randomly maybe pushing things to you. You probably aren't getting them like in the notifications on your phone. They may just be showing up when you sign in to YouTube. So that may help. I hope for the 744 of you or the 23.2% <laughs> that you will consider going in and turning on the notifications for all and also updating the setting on your phone because that should help um, alleviate you missing lives or um, you know videos that go on demand. So if you found that helpful and you have not already hit the thumbs up, I'm going to kindly ask that you do so because we're getting ready to move to the next PSA. All right, and this is probably not a big deal, but I am getting ready to change my primarily Friday, Saturday on-demand uploads from an on-demand meaning not live, right? Because after this live stream is over, this video will be on-demand meaning available for replay. But the ones that don't have a live audience where I'm just sitting in front of the camera filming and then I upload that later, I have been publishing those videos at 7 a.m. on Saturday. Don't ask me why. I'm changing that. So I just wanted you to know that if you are accustomed to looking for those videos because you're an early riser on Saturday mornings, I am changing that publish time to noon. That's all I'm going to say about that. Sundays, we will remain at the 6 p.m.-ish time because life happens. Um, but I did want you to know that, for example, I think I have a video that's scheduled for this Saturday. It will not go live at 7 a.m. I will publish it at noon. So we're going to get to a bag. We're going to get to a bag, I promise you. Um, but ladies, here's one of the other interesting things. Y'all can tell I'm a little bit of a nerd. And once I get a hold of some numbers and data. Um, but anyway... Um, I have noticed that my male viewer count and watch time for my platform has increased. So, ladies, I would kindly ask, because they're probably in the 63, 64 of you that are watching. Um, maybe they're looking for birthday or gift ideas or, um, you know, whatever that is. But we've got guys in the mix um, and I'd like to encourage them to be a bit more vocal. We've got uh, Sanford that pops in and out. Um, we communicate back and forth on Instagram. He sent me a picture today of a cute little 
well, I don't know if his daughter is watching, but she's got a surprise coming and it is absolutely adorable. I'm not going to say anything else, but um, so guys, we welcome you to participate in the chat. We want you here. We're here to help answer questions. Um, we also want to hear your thoughts on um, bags because we know that we put you guys through a lot trying to figure out um you know what to gift us what to get us the right size you don't know my size all that stuff so feel free to chime in and this amazing group of ladies is more than happy um to assist you but we want to hear your voice everybody has a space here um so last thing before we talk about bags all right so um yesterday featured my new baby I moved into her I think I'm going to post what I'm carrying in her um, on Instagram probably this week. So stay tuned for that. But um, I wanted to tell y'all that I decided to treat my Florentine leather. So Smith has, um, I did not dunk Smith in the tub like I do with natural Florentine to make sure that it you know, gets a good even patina, advance that process. But what I did do was I treated my red Florentine. Um, I use the Kiwi Protect All. It is safe on all types and all kinds and all colors of leather. So I specifically use this on bags and shoes. It is a Johnson & Johnson product. If you can think about kind of scotch guarding, um, do I do this with every piece of Florentine? No, I do not. And I'm not going to start. Um, I probably should have done it with my red large Russell because it may have spared um, some of the wear on it. But I love all of the, the, the love marks and beauty marks that that bag has. But because the red one has been so coveted and so hard to find and I I'm feeling like I probably should have ordered two to have a bag back up. And I know I have laughed and we have, some of us have exchanged text messages about people buying bag backups. But that's how bad I have wanted that bag that I feel like I needed a bag backup. But since I'm not going into that uh, world, this right here. The Kiwi Protect All for leather, bags and shoes, is what I sprayed all over my Smith. Not a spot left on her. Can't tell that she's been sprayed. 8 to 12 inches away from the bag. Well ventilated area. Tassel straps under the flap, under the bottom all included this is what i used you can pick this up at tarjay at walmart you can order it from amazon um you can sometimes find it in walgreens and i don't think i paid seven dollars for this and Kiwi is the conditioner that I use. It is the leather cleaner that I use. It is the brand that I use for protectant if I am going to use or, or treat a bag. So I know there are other brands that are discussed in this community. You may have your own favorite brand, but... Um, I love this stuff. This is what my mom used. The Kiwi brand is the only thing I can remember being in my house growing up. Like when we had to polish our shoes. Yes, I grew up in a house where you had to polish your shoes. Some people don't know what that's about. Um, but Kiwi was the brand of shoe polish that my mom kept on hand. And uh, primarily black, brown, white. Because that was... Though, so this, I mean, it has been around forever, but because it is tried and true and has never done any of my leather wrong, um, in my 40s, this is still what I go to. So, key, inexpensive, easily accessible, 
that is the PSAs. All right. So 64 of you, only 33% of you have hit the thumbs up. I'm going to ask that you go ahead and hit the thumbs up while I get ready to tell you about this addition to the satchel family. All right. So I have a few bag comparisons, but before I can show you the comparison, I guess I need to introduce you to this little bee. Any guesses? Any guesses? And let, let me see. What what do, do y'all think it is? What do you think it is? Is Rosalind getting in trouble? He, yes, Rosalind, you do need it. And wipe Ashton down and spray her too. Because <laughs> I know we've had the conversation about you and Ashton. She needs some protect all too. She needs some protect all too. <laughs> all right, ladies. So it is satchel time at least as a satchel to me and i think the color you may or may not color wise it may or may not surprise you since we're breaking all the rules this year but <sighs> lucinda and Mrs. Q, I think, nailed it. MCM and the MCM Boston. It is the MCM Boston 30 Essential Bag. So, if you are uh, adverse to the LV brand at the price point and only getting hints and specs and trims of leather, and you would much rather spend your money on an all leather bag than the MCM of 30 may be the way to go. This is the color Cognac. She has amazing features, including five feet. And I'm going to dissect her for you. She got to get stripped. Um, and then we're going to compare her to some other satchels so that you can see how she compares. And, uh oh, let me get that off. And uh, we'll go from there. So the first thing is the color. It's cognac. It is in the monogrammed leather. So Vasetto is the one that has like the dark color in the background, primarily on the, well, I guess they have it on some of the leathers, but it's mainly on their coated canvas. But this is an all leather monogrammed, even though it has the monogramming all over it. For me, this bag reads as a neutral because there are no additional colors on it. So with what I have on, which of course is a print, I think I can pull that off. If you say no, that's fine. Don't wear yours with an animal print when you get yours. But for me, it's a neutral. Five feet under the bottom. It has both the top handle. It has... <laughs> Mrs. Q, I know, I, I know you love this feature. I call this feature strap control, right? It's it's basically like you have with your luggage to keep your straps together. It keeps your straps under control to keep them from going everywhere. That is not the official name for that, y'all. But you know, like I tell you that the, the bottom of the bag is the butt, and I like a bit big butt bag. Um, for me, bags that have this security feature for the straps, this is this is bag control because there are so many bags um, where we complain about the bag the, the bag straps getting wonky or they don't stand up or they don't stay together. This one 
has bag control to it and it's all leather snap feature here so you just loop the other strap in it's adjustable so you can adjust it you can take it off if you want to but i don't think that's real smart for me i'm gonna keep it on there but you can adjust it so that the other strap gets in there and then it will let me do it the right way though um and then it will snap and keep the straps together so that they don't go everywhere see what i'm talking about bag control strap control strap control it does come with a webbed crossbody strap and it has the shoulder pad on it the little leather shoulder piece that helps keep that strap under control as well it's a pretty long strap y'all see i'm still trying to get the plastic off so it is adjustable so you could use it as a shorter shoulder bag or you can adjust it for crossbody it does have the mcm monogramming on the app so very similar to like the clara hobo when they revised the shoulder strap the hobo strap and did the monogramming in that so you've got that it is detachable so if you were not fond of it you can take it off you can take it off all gold hardware it does have feet on the bottom which i love that is the one thing about the clara medium and large that i think is a miss on those bags is that it does not have feet so I love, love, love the fact that it is, it has feet, but even without it, because of the shape and the base of the bag, it is, it's, it's, it's going to stand on its own. All right. So beat me up in the comments. That's fine. I'm a big girl. Look, I like to argue. That's why I took my ass to law school. So I'm, I'm here for any kind of bag argument. All right. This bag has a reinforced bottom. As I watch videos on bags that are not all leather, that are not all leather, that people pay way, 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 way more for, and the bottom of their bags sag, and that's a look. I don't possess the gene to appreciate a bag that has a saggy bottom. That's the reason that I um, like in my Miramar uh, tote that I put a bag organizer in there because it's nylon and it is dependent on my carry, it will sag. So I love the fact that for um, a bag that is leather, that is designed in size to carry quite a bit, that the bottom of it is reinforced so that it's not a saggy, droopy mess. I do not, I do not want the bottom of my bag looking like a baby's diaper that needs to be changed. Y'all know the look, you know the look, that little saggy, wet or number two butt diaper I, I i i don't want my bag bottom to look like that and this one is reinforced i'll let you see it again it's reinforced it is not going to do that now if you put a brick in there it probably is gonna give a little bit but it also has some stitching here under the bottom to help reinforce to keep it from getting you know the soupy diaper butt syndrome on the bottom of the bag y'all know what i'm talking about I, I know i'm not the only person that's seen a, a, a baby that needs their diaper change that this this isn't gonna do that nice hardware like i don't know that that little stud is necessary but i sure do like the fact that it ties into the feet on the bottom i love the fact that it 
Why, why did I not take these off? What's going on? Oh, please. <laughs> I love the fact that the hardware. Uh-oh. Why is that not coming off? take that plastic off later let me see if I can get that back on here right okay all right I like that the hardware on the handles right that little pin the hinge on the strap ties in the shape of it ties in to the little detail at the bottom of the zipper pull here at the bottom that zipper pull does not come up it doesn't release it's just a design feature and that also ties into the look of the feet on the bottom of the bag i love it all right let's take a look at the inside of the bag it does have zipper opening and the zipper stretches basically from base to base so it's going to open pretty wide it does have the double zipper pull so you can pull both center one or the other you know whatever whatever it is whatever your preference is there's some people that are ocd about their zipper pulls and that's fine we're here for it all stuffing i want you to see how much stuffing and air paper and dust cover and paper and more paper and a bunch of silica packets so here she is she has gusset leather not fabric not micro suede not anything else the same leather that this bag is made out of is the leather that creates the gusset here on the side. Let me see if y'all can see that. That is leather. And it is going to open wide. You don't have to worry about your stuff falling out. It has a light interior. Listen, I'm gonna show you a couple of bags and the interiors of them from a comparison standpoint are not light. I know we're talking about MCM tonight, but Dooney and Burke has absolutely spoiled the heck out of me with its bag organization and the interior because they don't do dark bag linings. And I appreciate that so that it keeps the interior of my bag from becoming the black hole that we are all aware of and have experienced because a company did not think about the scavenger hunt that sometimes happens when we're looking for things in our bag. This MCM has mirrored the lining of this bag so that it is a light khaki color. It has the... Um, so the the handle hinges are the are attached to the inside of this bag so that's the hardware that you're seeing here and as you can tell it has MCM I don't know if you, is that's going to make out but there in the center that little etching is actually MCM two on each side of the bag for the hinges You've also got the same gold-plated um, logo plate on the back wall of the bag, along with a zipper pocket. It is a decent size zipper pocket, not as large as my preferred zipper pockets from Dooney, but it does hold a lot. And what I will say, although it is a little bit of a snugger, is that a right? Is that a word? A little bit of a tighter that's a word um fit i can get everything that i normally have in the zipper pocket in my dooney bags 
in the MCM pockets. And I know that because of my Clara, um, large Clara hobo, and because of my Clara tote. It has also on the interior, on the opposite wall, a slip pocket collared in the same leather as the bag. Now, for uh, those other brands that don't have lining, zippers don't go all the way to the side, it's an upgrade or, or an expense added cost to get the crossbody strap, doesn't have strap control, doesn't have any organization on the inside. And did I indicate that the inside of the bag is not lined and that the butt of the bag sags? Okay, this bag doesn't have any of that. None of that. So it is amazing. The hardware is smooth. We're going to take a look at the dimensions here. Let me get, let's, let's see if we can get some strap control going on here. All right. I should have looked at the website. But I do know it's not that big. So let's see. All right. The bottom from end to end is 12 inches. So lengthwise from here to here is 12 inches. That's a ruler. That's one foot long. The butt of the bag. Let me shorten this a little bit. From... I'm going to measure from edge to edge. So not just the center strip because that's just reinforcement. I'm going to measure from edge to edge here. Let's see what that is because I cannot read upside down. It is six and a half. She got a big butt. She got a big butt. So 12 inches long, six and a half inches in depth. 12 inches long, six and a half in depth. And let's see, we're going to do it from the side. We are looking at, um, about eight and a quarter. Mm, yeah, about eight and a quarter high. I guess if I did it from the center, it might be right at, it's still eight and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, all right. I'm going to simmer down and I'm going to show it to you. All right, let's see. Okay. So I think she's a neutral. I think she goes well with what I have on. If you don't agree, I'm okay with you critiquing it in the comments. You know, you know, you're not hurting my feelings at all. But there she is over the crook of the arm. She is definitely not um, a shoulder carry for me. If you have like string bing arms, which I'm a little jealous of, maybe you can get her on your shoulder. I don't fall in that category. Um, but she is definitely um, handle um, and she falls the bottom of her. Let's see, I'm five five and the, the top of her is the top falls right at my knee with my arm fully extended and the bottom of her falls about mid calf on me so from a cross body standpoint and I've got her adjusted all the way to the bottom cross body wise oh that's a good carry right there soft strap completely adjustable so if I wanted to use it as a shoulder bag I could but she falls right at my hip where I like for my bags to 
fall and I'm able to get my hand underneath without stretching or anything. I just love, let me see if I can, right there. Like arm fully extended and it, it falls perfectly with the strap extended. I'm gonna adjust the strap a little bit, but I think it may be a little bit awkward because it has the, um, the shoulder pad or the shoulder rest on it, but I'm just gonna see what the extension looks like if I shorten it a little bit. Okay. That. Let's see. Does that get it? Let's see. I'm gonna shorten it just a smidgen more. Y'all like that technical term, smidgen. I'm gonna drop that back down. And I think. Okay, I would personally like it a little bit shorter. But then I think it's probably going to throw off the shoulder pad. I just would prefer it a little bit shorter. That's a much better length for me. Again, it kind of gets it right back at my hip. If you've been watching lately, you know that that's kind of my, I, I, that's, that's my good spot. That's my preferred spot. But it does push the shoulder, um, the leather strap a little bit to the front of my shoulder because I've got the hardware that has adjusted to shorten the strap. So whether you want the strap to hang or if you would prefer to take it off, let me just give you that look really quick. There's the hardware not heavy but definitely substantial and it's a beautiful finish and there we go without the strap if you are a satchel girl or if you've been considering a satchel or maybe that other brand but you are not sold on the cost of that bag this is an amazing all leather alternative. Yep. I love it. And it's a neutral for me. All right. So from a comparison standpoint, because y'all know, um, there are a few things that irk my handbag soul. Um, what is the Lexington? <laughs> Two is bag returns. I do not want, I don't want to deal with returns and I don't want to buy a bag that I have expected to go from the warehouse to my house and it has pit stopped at your house and went back to the warehouse and then come to my house. I don't like dealing with returns. So in an effort as we close out or get ready to head into the fourth quarter of 2020, which y'all know is like the straight up year of the devil, um, I'm going to show you some other satchel comparisons, pieces that you have seen on my channel before. These are not new pieces. Um, and that way you can kind of get a feel, a flavor for the difference between these satchels so that you can decide whether or not, based on bags that you may, be, all, may already be familiar with, whether or not the Boston 30 is a viable option for you. All right. So the first thing I'm going to compare it to is a bag that is at a much, much lower price point. It is vegan leather. So y'all already know it's, I've already given away one of these bags because 
I really do need an animal to be sacrificed I, I, to, for my for my bags. I, I need the leather. Um, I, I feel like I am part of the cleanup crew when it comes to animals that have been sacrificed for food, right? You enjoy eating the, the steak. I'm going to enjoy the hide and it's going to last for a whole lot longer whole lot longer than your steak. So that's that's the that's the crew that I'm on and this bag ended up being a vegan leather so it will likely not stay in my collection. Here we go. Antonio Milani executive tote. Beautiful beautiful bag. It is vegan leather. I have carried the cognac one. It's in this color. Maybe I should have pulled it out so that there was a true color comparison and everything. But Antonio Malone's um, tassel tote. I wanted you to kind of see because this bag was really big for some people. And you passed on it. But I wanted to kind of show you the size difference between the Boston 30 and the Antonio Milani Executive tassel tote both satchels both come with uh straps shoulder straps crossbody straps whatever you want to call it both have the extended zipper on the side further down here across the top here this is the piece i'm talking about right here this one snaps and removes boston does not length and depth let me see if I can get these. Let's see if I can get them aligned for you. All right. So let's see. Is that on camera? Let's see. There we go. All right. So that you can see the difference in the length and the depth. And there's no guessing. The Antonio Milani is definitely taller than the Boston 30. Um, it is absolutely longer, like significantly longer. But it's also vegan, which is basically a way of saying not leather. <laughs> and I don't care for vegan. Um, but it took me adding vegan to my collection Y'all know I, I talk a lot of mess on my channel about bags and stuff, but it's because I put my money where my mouth is. It took me buying vegan for me to say with 100% certainty that I don't do vegan. I don't do vegan. It's going to go. I've already gifted one of them to my aunt. I carried one. And then this one will find a home at a different address. Gorgeous color, beautiful color, but it's it's vegan. It's gotta go. Yep. All right, here's the next one. For those of you that are here because of Henry Bendel or maybe, you know, 18 months or whatever ago, you, uh, found my channel because of the HB Halls. I've got an HB Bowery um, satchel to share with you. For those of you that may have missed the update, there is finally a named tenant for the HB flagship location in New York. And that tenant is going to be UGG. So UGG is going into the uh, former flagship New York location where Henry Bendel's Ultimate Girls Playground was. That will now be UGG. I do not know. I don't remember seeing um, when the store is actually going to open, but um, they have put their information up on the front of that building and will be inhabiting inhabiting that space at some point. So 
Here is the um, Bowery satchel that was a part of the final holiday collection. It is in the petrol. It looks like a mermaid to me. It is definitely not black. It picks up purple and blues and greens. Very, um, just as a comparison, because I know some of you have this one. This bag, actually, let me rephrase it. This bag inspired this purchase, all right? We were all together on Mrs. Q's channel one Saturday, and she, I think, was in Houston at the Galleria doing a tribe time birthday weekend. Mrs. Q, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, in Dillard's, yep, Rosalind got it. And saw we saw this bag, and it gave us these vibes and many of us purchased this for this. Um, I'm not so sure that, I don't know if this, is this leather? Are you leather? Are you vegan? Because you may have to go too. I have been considering um, parting with a couple of my HB purchases. I hate dealing with sales, so they may end up being gifted. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to part ways with this one, though. But anyway, that is neither here nor there. Let me get back on topic. Bowery, HB, Boston, MCM, from a size comparison, uh, Bowery is a smidgen taller, just a hair, handle strop. Strap drop is definitely longer. It does come with a crossbody, double zippers, has the flap here. Okay, what I do like about both the Antonio Milani and the HB bag is that they both have outside pockets. So easy, easy access for phone, key mask, hand sanitizer, travel size Lysol, whatever it is that you need quick and easy access to now. It has dual pockets, magnetic closure. What I dislike about the inside of this bag is one, the organization, the pockets are not um, as large as my preferred ones in Dooney, and it has a dark lining. It has the, uh, the chocolate the HB chocolate, um, that's, that's what it is. It's chocolate, it's brown metallic, which makes the interior of the bag dark. It has the Centennial Stripe zipper pull, branding all over the hardware. I do have the strap in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed carrying this bag. It is definitely a head turner. But the pocket system, although similar to Dooney, it, the pockets are not as large as Dooney, but it does have more organization in it. The HB Bowery does have more organization than the Boston. Because before you even get inside this bag, you have two outside pockets that run the length of the bag, plus you have a back zipper pocket and then two slip pockets on the front they're just not the same length as the Dooney ones so um yeah there she is let me uh flip her on her side so that you can see the depth and the length difference let me see if I can maneuver them around and get that there Let's see. And that I'm side, this leather is so soft. You can see where my hand is on the uh, Boston because it's indented there. But there's the comparison to the Henry Bendel Bowery Satchel. All right. The next comparison is
the Dooney and Burke version of this bag. And y'all know which bag this, this is modeled after, right? Yeah. I think when I did my research, I think I found that Prada actually did this bag style first. And then LV picked it up and kind of popularized it. And then every other fashion house has their own version of this bag. Um, but I think if I've got my information right, if memory serves me correctly, I think it was Prada that did it first. But LV is the one that is most known for it. The iconic silhouette is best known from LV. It is the next satchel comparison is the Dooney and Burke Main Street satchel, which is no longer available. I still have not carried this color, but y'all, it's because I have one in red and I reach for red all the time. When I think about this silhouette, I just reach for the red one. But here is the Dooney and Burke Main Street Satchel. This bag is old. It's old. Still in its original packaging because I keep reaching for the red one. But this is an old one. I really wish Dooney would bring this back. And I especially wish they would bring it back in Florentine leather. Peter. Making a new request. All right, here is the duty version side by side. And when I think of the bag that is closest to it that I have in my collection, right? I can't compare it to the LV. I don't have that. Um, Dooney is the one that nailed it. Size-wise, if, so the size of, the, of them are the same or very similar. I guess I should have measured them, huh? I haven't measured any of the others. Sorry. Um, but the organization for the Dooney version is really good. What makes it really good? Dooney took advantage of the space, the depth on the side of the bag. So you've got outside pockets. Similar to, um, I think it's the Olivia. If you're into coach, similar or close to Rowan. Rowan, I think. Dooney, maybe the Trudy satchel. But I don't think those, Olivia has pockets on the sides, but I don't think the other ones do. So it has, so if you're looking for a place to stick your mask or your phone for easy access or maybe a personal phone and a work phone or, a, you know, hand sanitizer and a mask or whatever, you got outside organization, gorgeous hardware, simple detailing on the front, Safiano leather. It, this, this is, you know, this leather doesn't care anything about rain, sleet. It's, I mean, you just can't kill Safiano leather. In true Dooney fashion, it, has no. the bottom. it is also reinforced and it has leather reinforcements under the strap that are uh, for the feet that are going to also provide a little bit of stability and keep the butt from sagging. No saggy diapers here. We haven't even gotten to the inside of the bag, right? And you got a pocket here, a pocket here, and a pocket here. So whether it, it's not, um, maybe if you had an old school razor or maybe an iPhone generation one or two, you could probably get your phone in here. It is not going to fit today's smartphone. But if you wanted to throw a, um, a, maybe a card case in here or if you wanted to just throw your key fob for your car so that you can remain hands free, that no. would be here. If you were um, trying to keep your work 
badge ID for quick access. That would fit here. I'm spending a lot of time on a bag that's no longer available. Let me get back to the comparison. All right, top handles and this bag only has a single, single zip. It does not go all the way down to the bottom. So it stops because you've got pockets here, right? But the inside is true Dooney and Burke. They spared no corners. It has the red cotton twill. It has the standard setup. It's got the double pockets on the front wall. So two slips. Um, and on the back wall, you have both. Um, actually, it only has. No, it has a slip and a zip on the back wall. I was like, it doesn't have it, but it does. It's back there. It's just tucked under the stuff and under the paper. This one, if you have looked for this one, can't find it on the resale market. Um, it does not have. It has more organization than the Boston 30 from MCM. But what I will tell you is that for what I have in my collection, it is most comparable to the Boston um, or more comp or Boston is more comparable to the Main Street if you missed out on getting this one in your collection. I have or had, I think I may have given it to my sister, and Olivia, I could not find it, which is not uncommon in that chaos. Um, but if you missed out on this one and you're interested in it, secondary market is going to be the way to go. Um, if you're looking for what I personally feel is a better option than the LV version, then I would say Boston is the way to go if you can find it because it is all leather. You've got organization on the inside. It's got the gusset. It's got feet. It comes with the shoulder strap. It has top strap control. It's got the hang tag with the couchette. It has the double zipper. It's got organization in the inside. It's lined. It has feet. Did I say it has feet? It has feet. It has a reinforced bottom. It at a fraction of the price of the LV one and you're getting all leather. And MCM's leather has not disappointed me yet. The color saturation, the durability, the wear, the weight, their hardware. It, I think, will be hard to find another bag at this price point that will have better features than this one unless you can find this one so that's let me see did i do i don't know that i did the whole side by side but let's see if we can get them side by side so you can look at the length this one like the true lv version does not have a shoulder strap this one does you know that's an upgrade for lv but this one also has an outside pocket which it has three outside pockets. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Look at that. Even the Dooney one is a smidgen longer. Their butts, I feel like I need to measure butts. I need to measure butts and I need to measure length because this was the bag that I reached for when I was looking for dimensions to see if it would work, to see if the Boston dimensions would work. This is the bag that I reached for. So... The LV, I mean, the LV, the MCM is 12 inches. The Dooney Main Street is 13 inches in length. So 13 for Dooney, 12 for MCM. So you're talking about an inch difference. So you're talking about going from here, from here to here. So not significant from here to here all right then let's lock that back down and let's talk about the depth because the boston one i think i said was six and a half six and a quarter six and a quarter the dooney one is six 
six and three quarters, so a little bit bigger butt. And then the height should be about the same, and I'm just going to measure it on the side. Let me get that adjusted yet again. From top to the bottom, the Dooney one is eight and a half. So if this has been on your wish list, secondary market, this is a great option. I did not look at the dimensions uh, of the Speedy before this video to tell you what the difference is between the two. Maybe I should have done that. But I'm sure somebody can take a look at that for me and throw those dimensions in the chat so that we have a comparison. And then the last bag, which is infamous with Dooney and Berg, does not have the same vibe, but it is, I would say, one of Dooney and Berg's most popular satchels, and that is the Florentine Medium Satchel. Um, Y'all know I don't do small, mini, nano, microscopic, tiny I don't do any of those I'm a medium satchel girl so I thought um, even though the silhouette is slightly different that many of you have picked a camp as it relates to the size of the satchel Dooney satchel um, and you would be able to see as a comparison the difference between the two sizes so I hope that this one is helpful here they are side by side. And this is, for anybody that's interested, this color is light taupe. Light taupe cognac. Dooney, Florentine leather, um, MCM monogram leather. Leather, not coated cotton. Do y'all, don't let that... Don't let that get past you. Thank you, Suz. This has just dropped into the chat the LV Speedy 30 dimensions, which actually is closer to the Dooney Main Street satchel than the Boston is. Actually, the Dooney one is actually a little bit bigger because remember, Dooney is 13 long and the Speedy is only 11.8. So 11.8 means that it's actually smaller than the Boston. By a smidgen, but this was 12 inches long. It looks like the LV one is only 11.8. Did I get that right, Suz, or did I get the numbers mixed? No, the length, yeah. 11.8 for Speedy, 12 for MCM, 13 for Dooney. Um, beg Peter to bring that back because that Main Street satchel, that bag is the truth. And you cannot kill it. You can not. All right. So, no strap control, but we do have um, amazing hardware, amazing leather. You've got your tassels on the side. I'm going to give you a side profile view of them both. Let's see if we can get these side by side. The Dooney one does not have a flat bottom. It's got a little bit of a rounded butt. Um, but it gives the same or similar silhouette as the Boston. But it doesn't have the flat bottom that the Boston and that the Main Street satchel have. So there, let me see, is that pretty even? Keep in mind, the Dooney one may look a little bit taller, but it's got some extra leather there at the top that's going to create the smile, um, you know, the fold over flap for the bag. The strap drop on these is, let me get them lined up here, is, I would say it's the same. Um, differences in the strap, you've got strap control on this one, you've got whip stitching on this one. Um, Dooney does not have any outside pockets, so they are comparable. Both come with straps that can be adjustable or removed. They both have feet under the bottom, 
but the medium satchel is definitely going to be longer, I think. Yes, longer, significantly longer. It's a big mama bag. So if the medium satchel was too large for you and you have downsized to maybe the small um, Florentine satchel, the small, somebody take a look at the small uh, Florentine satchel. Those dimensions may actually be more comparable to this. And if they are, before y'all even go there, because I know y'all have jokes. <laughs> no, I'm not buying a small satchel. I don't care how comparable it is. I am a medium Florentine satchel girl. So even if the small is this size, not doing it because the opening of that bag is way too small. So we will, we, we'll go ahead and slay that dragon before it peeks its head out. <laughs> but it is definitely smaller and I feel like the dimensions of the Boston are going to be more comparable to Judy and Burke's small satchel where this one is the medium, which should probably be called large. So there is the comparison. This bag uh, is also, and I know I have it stuffed, but this bag is also um, significantly heavier than the Boston. The hardware, the leather is thicker, more substantial. Um, the whip stitch detail, you got the added weight of both the hardware, tassels on both sides the extra hardware and leather with the belting. Um, so Suz says that the small flow is 13 inches long, which is actually Main Street satchel length. It's eight high, which is a little shorter than the Main Street satchel. And 5.75, it has a smaller butt by an inch. But... The small flow is actually larger by an inch in length. So this is 12. The small flow is 13 inches long. So the, the length of the main street. Um, this one is about eight and what did I say? Eight and a quarter high. The small flow is eight high. And uh, the small flow has a five and three quarter inch butt. And this one is six and the main street was, what did I say? Six and three quarters. So they're in the same um, size family, but you are going to get a size difference. So if you're considering that bag, I would suggest looking at some videos, some reviews of the small um, Florentine satchel if this is not your jam or if it's not available or they don't have the color you want maybe the small version of the Florentine leather which is amazing but maybe that would be an alternative to you because the dimensions are going to be similar to the main street a little close kind of a if these two had a baby it would be the small Florentine. I think that's, yeah, that's, that, that's, if these two, if this interracial relationship produced a spawn, it would be the duty and birth Florentine small satchel. <laughs> that's, that's how we're going to lose, that's how we're going to leave, lose, leave that interracial relationships with bags, having a baby, they would produce a completely different brand and it would be in thicker, more substantial leather, heavier hardware, more tassels, more belting, more details, better organization, red twill lining, shoulder strap, feet under the bottom. It, 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 it would be the best of both worlds. Um, it just would not have an outside pocket. So, y'all, this, I... I love it. I love it. Um, if it were not for the small satchel, 
having such a small mouth, meaning the opening of the bag, right? When you unzip it and open it, those dimensions might have had me to reconsider it, but the mouth of it isn't going to be big enough and I don't want to have to finagle my wallets and sunglasses and all that other stuff to get my stuff in and out. So that one is still off of the table for me. But if you're looking for something that is readily available or if you're not exploring brands, um, the small satchel may be the way to go if you're Dooney Loyal. If you're interested in exploring and looking for something that is not at the LV price point that is comparable in size and has a few extras, then the Boston 30 from MCM is the way to go. And if Peter is listening to our Christmas wish list, then maybe the Main Street satchel will come back. Whether it's in my preference is Florentine, um, but I know that can be temperamental for some people. That isn't everyone's preference. Um, but even if it came back in Safiano, because it's that that needs to be a structured bag, it needs to hold its shape. I would add another couple, depending on the color scheme, because it is amazing. It is amazing. Um, so that's it. I appreciate you all hanging out with me for nearly 90 minutes. I hope that these comparisons were helpful. Um, I've been pulling out a lot of bags, showing them. I don't know. I think that is going over well. I think you all enjoy it. I've gotten a few comments, um, from folks saying that they like that or that they appreciate seeing comparisons even though some of the bags may lo no longer be available. Um, I love your feedback on that. Um, lots of PSA. So if you signed in late, lots of what I hope are helpful PSAs at the beginning of this live stream. Um, meet somebody new this week. Listen, we are all at home. We're all at home. We're being very selective about the company that we keep. We are, we have basically like overnight become a very digital society. We were already on the brink of it before, but everything that's going on in the world right now has truly accelerated us into being a very digital society, the very digital globe um, from a global standpoint. Meet somebody new, connect with them on um, Instagram, connect with them on Twitter or Snapchat, make a friend. Um, it is so nice to have somebody um, to bounce a handbag question off of, to trade pictures and sale information. Um, and that in many cases leads to other discussions and you end up with an amazing um, handbag community and a great new friend that understands your love for all things leather handbag related. You may even find somebody that has an appreciation for vegan. If that's your thing, I'm not your girl. I need, I need my leather. Um, but it's all kinds of folks in this community and I hope that you will absolutely take advantage of the time that you spend here, right? It's a safe space to chat. We all have our handles. You can agree or disagree or ask questions. And I think this community is very helpful. Um, I greatly appreciate my live chat moderators because they help to keep this a safe space, a respectful place so that we don't have a bunch of trolls coming in disrupting the flow of the live so ladies i really 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 appreciate everything that you do to help keep um this a safe space and that it is exactly what we envision um as a tribe when um that idea was born in chicago Memorial Day weekend, many, 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 many moons ago, it feels like. I cannot wait. I'm with Kim. I cannot wait for some like in-person tribe time again. 
Um, listen, we will be back together on Mrs. Q's channel on Friday evenings at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central for For Real Friday. I think I have a video that's coming this Saturday, which will launch at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And then we will be back here next Sunday, 6 p.m.-ish <laughs> Eastern Standard Time for Feed Your Addiction. Please don't forget, check out Candy Crusher. Check out um, Lisa. What's Lisa's channel's name? I think she, I just saw her sign in. Lisa J's World. Did I get it right? Yes. Lisa J's World. Her last two videos. Make sure that you check out Mrs. Q's For Real Friday from Friday night. We had a great time over there. Go check out Carmen Hawkins' channel. She has amazing content on um, her fall bags. You'll also see where I got my style inspiration for tonight's get up. Um, there are there is the hand one bag band island tag video still going up. If you have not checked out those videos, you are missing a treat. It is amazing to watch how different women, different collections, different ideas of Bag Band Island. And we have created this tag or the tag was actually created by Reshmi underscore beauty around the world. She tagged a bunch of us and we have taken our, our we've put our creative spin on Bag Band Island. And if you've not checked out Lucinda Quimbley's video, she actually is physically standing on the island when she introduces her bag. Lots of amazing content. Um, please make sure that you do those four things if you're trying to keep up with folks in, the, in this um, community, that you subscribe, that you turn on the bell alert, that you ask for all notifications, and then you go into the settings on your app and tell YouTube that you do want YouTube notifications and that should solve all hopefully of the issues that we've been having in the community as it relates to um, notifications. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, I do hope you find something that feeds your addiction. Take care.